thought you were creating a W. It sounds to me like it's similar. Uh, I wouldn't call W a boutique hotel, that's for sure. We've got hundreds of uh, rooms and a huge convention facility, so it's far from being boutique. But yes, initially the perception has always been that W is boutique and it's hip, trendy. And But I must say, after having opened the first W in Seoul back in 2003-2004 then, um, the brand has evolved. Yeah. I mean, the days of hip and trendy and funky and playful are gone. I think uh, what, we are, what we are today is more uh, moving towards today's travelers. I mean, we're not after the young generation or the hip. Uh, I think that uh, the perception, like, a lot of people perceive us as that, but that's not quite it because travelers today, they expect something different. And contrary to what people think, uh, we're really not after the young generation uh, only per se. A lot of our business uh, travelers and clients are high profile bank from banking institutions, from the corporate, there's a good mix of celebrities. And at the end of the day, we, in today's world, everybody wants something different, you know, and young or old, you know, we, we just want to be in it. Whether you're a trendsetter, a trend seeker, or, you know, whatever it may be, I think okay. each and every one of us want to explore okay, and so, so, experience different things. So can you just uh, give me three words that you uh, use to associate your brand with? Just three words, each of you, three words. Engagement. Three each or one each to make three, no, three <laughs> words each. Three words each. Engagement, oh, functional. Okay. Was it functional? Was another word that you used? Well, I would say engaging. It's fun. Yeah, and um, interactive. Okay. And um, come on. Uh, quirky, engaging, and honest. And I would say innovative, uh, uniqueness, and for the brand. European touch. European touch. Okay. Is that a good selling point these days, you think? European touch. Anyway. Um. Uh, <laughs> being European, I think, is totally unique. Yes. The touch, yes. Okay. Um, all right. Now, we, we've also said that, I mean, well, I said anyway in my presentation, like innovation comes from asking the right question, the critical question. So what was the critical question you asked before you launched your product or service? Did you ask any questions? Yeah, I think in our case, uh, I, I covered it in the presentation that we could see this trend towards people traveling low cost and, and indeed wanting to travel further low cost. Um, but it was also the realization that, that what is the current perception of low cost airlines? Uh, in Europe, particularly with the likes of Ryanair, it, it's cheap and nasty. Uh, with any airline and, and indeed with many hotels, it is impersonal. It's a, it's a very mass market, um, process driven uh, industry. Uh, so, so how do we get away from that? Uh, and, and for us, it was more about creating a personality, both externally and also internally, hence the use of scooter tube. Um, and it was also realizing the fact that uh, the, the, the person flying a low-cost airline is not the same person. One person will travel on business to Hong Kong on Monday morning and fly Cathay Pacific or Singapore Airlines because they want the schedule, the predictability. But when they travel uh, for their own purposes in the weekend, they go to Australia or wherever, they're quite happy to fly a low-cost airline. So it's more about providing a product that fits the need rather than trying to define the market so closely and, and just target that particular segment. So it's like really creating a mass, mass and personal. How do you make it mass and then at, at the same time personal? What was the question that you asked that one? So first we asked Richard Quest what he thought about his own test. We try really to we, we, we look at the entire industry and we try to find out something which was new. And you, you mentioned it before that you don't know what Europe can bring. We realized that first, <laughs> there is no European hotel business uh, which is worldwide and in high hand. So through that, we decided to go with our brand to become totally worldwide and to be strong enough and to be proud of the European culture and having the French touch on top of it. So through that, we discover that there is also that we found out or we believe that there is still a boutique need for many guests, a new generation, or generation, and we try to create something which will match the need of everyone. So to be playful, to be unique, and to be different, and to be sure that each hotel we have around the world won't be a lot for the sole label 
will be different from the one we've seen before, but still with the same guideline and the same direction for each product. Okay, so your question would, uh, was like, how do you create a European style brand that was unique, playful, and different from, yeah? Um, Rose, what was the question you asked? I, I actually like the scudetier. <laughs> I really, really love that. Yeah. I think the, the, the question is simple, you know. How would you, after after a full day's work, right? I mean, in Singapore, it's a business city. Where do you want to go back to? Do you want to get back into a stuffy environment? Or do, you want, do you want to just go back to a place where you can just chill out and be yourself and, you know, that just do what you want? Yeah, I mean, um, we don't want to sound like a home away from home, but what we want to give is just, just chill, you know, just relax, be yourself, unpretentious, and and just be cool. I think some of you may have already walked through the, the W uh, living room in the lobby. I think it's it's really, you know, just just feel great and and comfortable. Yeah, not not even a, 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 a feeling of you being in a hotel environment, and that's what we want to project. One of the things that I've always, I mean, actually went to the Seoul, uh, Bangkok, I, I did a, a tour of it, and I did the, uh, without your knowing, Stefan, I sneaked no, no, in stealthily okay. and did my own uh, site okay. inspection. Okay. And uh, uh, as a customer, I'm always wary of hotels where, where the staff are better dressed than I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's really quite daunting, you know? I mean, the staff in the Seoul, Seoul Hotel, Bangkok, are just amazingly dressed, and they're also stylish. It's Same as the thing. That is, uh, in fact, they are dressed by Christian Lacroix. For each of the so, we are having, yes, I know it looks incredible, but all the uniform of so Bangkok are designed, made uh, in Thailand, but designed and reviewed by Christian Lacroix himself. For the same in Mauritius is Kenzo Takada, uh, Takada Kenzo, sorry, the famous uh, Franco-Japanese uh, uh, fashion designer. For so Singapore, it will be the same. No need to ask me because no, 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 no. I, won't, I won't tell you anything. So, <laughs> and certainly not today. And certainly not to you. Um, so you you can go to to each hotel. The idea is to have uniform which are different. That okay, maybe if they are better than when you arrive with a jean or a t-shirt. Uh, but that also gives you the concept of the the label that we want something a bit different than what Richard Quest again said, that hotel industry don't involve. I think our industry involves a lot, maybe not enough in red parity, as you mentioned, or in a way we do direct sales, but in product, if we look at the last 20 years, in general, from low-cost hotels that exist as well, as you know, to, to high end, it changed a lot. And this is why we try to do also with the uniform, is a unique experience. And this is maybe the only time you really remember the uniform that you saw in a yeah. hotel. Usually, ask yourself, do you remember the last hotel you went? How was the uniform of the housekeeper, of the, the person to give you the key? Yeah. Usually, we don't really remember. Okay, so, so without being naughty, uh, why do you use a Japanese uh, designer for a European style brand? <laughs> it's, it's French. It's French. No, I'm, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, it's French. I'm sorry, it's French. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, he changed his mind, but okay. now he's right. He was born in Japan. <laughs> we accept everyone in France. <laughs> okay. What I also noticed in, in your in your hotel that, that there were different elements to, to the room, right? There was a, a metal. Did you stay in one of the rooms? Uh, no, I couldn't afford it. I couldn't afford it. Uh, it's, it's way out of my budget. Because you didn't ask me. <laughs> so but, which uh, one did you like? I, I like the water. I like the water element. The water so because what does that make me? Ah, I don't know if I can say in public. Uh, <laughs> we have four elements. The design of that hotel and it's unique for Bangkok. It's not the same for all, all hotels around the world. We have four, the four elements. Uh, the fifth one is for the attendees, the fire. For this reason, we didn't use it for, for the rooms. Uh, well, the water, the metal, the earth, and the wood. Uh, and usually now, we open since four months, we categorize the guests staying in one of the room elements. So water is usually a classic but uh, adventurous person. So I don't know if it goes to you. That's me. That's all to me, yes. So it's <laughs> actually we don't say earth because it's not the same. So we have a totally different style of room. Again, I invite you to, to at least, if you cannot afford, like I heard, Staying with us, uh, have a visit because 
for it's totally different and it's not uh, so expensive. Okay. It's in Thailand, so it's not. <laughs> easy. So obviously, I mean, this is an attempt to personalize, you know, the, the product offering to the customer profile, right? Yes. Depending on the element. So let's talk about personalization. And uh, I mean, Campbell is talking about how he, he creates a mass brand and yet make it personal. And W, how do you make it personal for your guests? How do you how do you customize that offering rather than somebody just going in to chill? How do you customize that product offering? <coughs> Well, the personalization really comes in through what we know of the customer. I think in hotel business, we would already, ideally, I mean, with the network uh, uh, within the hotels, would know what the client preferences would be way ahead of time. Then from then on, I think uh, it's pretty much uh, the basics of making sure that we provide what the client would uh, prefer to have in terms of beds or, or uh, beverages and amenity in the guest room and the, the floor that you would prefer, for example. So, you know, those are the basics. But above and beyond that, I think what makes the difference is the personalization goes beyond that, that actual uh, uh, guest or client personal ones, but it's more what we like to throw out there, as you may have heard about whatever, whenever service. Yeah? So all our, our talents are hugely engaged with the clients in providing whatever, whenever, and as we normally would put it, as long as it's legal. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so, so that, we believe, is beyond the typical personalization that okay. every hotel would provide. Can you give one example of, you know, you worked in W Seoul and now here, right? Can you give an example of a service that somebody wanted whatever, whenever, that was slightly quirky or out of the norm? Okay, I mean, examples would be like they want to provide a surprise um, element, uh, a surprise for girlfriend or wife or partner or what have you. We've got that, yeah. And uh, they may want to purchase something which is quirky, yeah, and we have what we call the insider access, and it's not something that you can easily uh, purchase uh, out of a typical store, but there will be uh, contacts and concierge that typically know this kind of stuff. Um, it's still legal though, we're not talking drugs and that nasty stuff, yeah? But we, I, I would not want to mention it really, yeah? But, uh, but we have done to the extreme of really helping a customer purchase something for their loved one as a surprise element prepared in the guest room as well, yeah? And, um, and also make arrangements for the, the music and the whole, the whole um, DJ mixes, for example, that's been played in the suite where we have also a DJ console. So things like that we can always uh, make arrangements with and bring in even the DJs into okay. their suites. Okay. So, we've so, done that. so Campbell, how do you make it? I mean, you have a, a personality. I think, you know, you've created your own word, Scootitude, which is just great, and people are using it. Let's scoot out of here, you know, as, as part of the vocabulary now. How do you make it personal for the customer? I mean, are you using Twitter, for example, for them to engage with you or any, any such? So, some people want personal and some people don't. Mm -hmm. and, and those that are engaging on social media already, I mean, we, we have a lot of competitions, a lot of engagement, as I've described. Um, other people just don't want fuss. And for those people, we, we just really straight up and down, we offer a very simple product on our website. We offer very simple terms and conditions, uh, which people sometimes still don't read. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but at the end of the day, it does come back to, I mean, we, we, the fact that we chose a name which has subsequently become a verb yeah. uh, is no accident. We chose it deliberately because it can be a noun and a verb. Uh, short, sharp, it describes travel, it describes movement. Uh, but the use of scooter really was the, the personalization uh, because it, it is, as I said, it, it, it's a positioning externally. Um,